everybody it is cinnamon cooney your art sherpa and it is big art quest number 17 how to get over the fear and artist block on the mic today is john my husband hey guys also known as stunt hands but he doesn't have to stunt hand anymore because everything's robotic now we're Pretty working much. on it yes. we're working Not on quite it there yet we're getting he's close. been he's been trying to get our studio entirely robotic if it's your first time here we're going to cover the strategies to handle the blockages the hurdles to being creative, to being able to paint, to being able to get that out there. I'm hoping everybody's doing pretty good today. Wow, yeah, as we, it's good. everyone's doing really great. They're all really happy to hear, and they say they love your hair. I yeah, I did my flowers today because I wanted to show off my purple. Get your purple and the I red. Your, your tips are on fire. Pink. It's super it's pink. So it's so fuchsia pink. I'm so excited. I paid so many dues. I forged the ground that allowed these colors to come into being <laughs> back in the day, dipping my head in Kool-Aid. <laughs> hard stuff. Hard stuff. That's awesome. But now we have these new technologies. So create a block. Um, what I would love for you guys to do in the live event, if you're here for the live, is to sort of, um, as we're going, talk about your experiences, talk to each other about where your blocks are. Um, talk about what your strategies are as we're having this conversation. Yeah. Because I was just saying to John this morning, because we like to talk about what we're doing before we do it, mm -hmm. um, the idea being that we are not kind of a one-size-fits-all species. We're a mishmash. We're, you know, we have a lot of similarities, but then in that, there's a bunch of diversity about how we are and who we are. And, of course, that impacts our creative flow. So it's talking to each other and sharing those strategies that really helps the group overall succeed the best. Because you don't know, you might say something that completely unblocks another person in the chat. Yeah, totally. So, even after, after in the comments, talk about what it is that gets you blocked and talk about the things that help you get unblocked. Mm -hmm. So that's your job. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, <laughs> would be that. And I'm just going to start out right now and say there are two kinds of blocks. Because artist block is kind of this blanket term. You know, writer's block, artist block, creative block. That yeah. really refers to a whole myriad of issues. And I like to break those up into two segments. One is things that you can change. Mm -hmm. Right? These are things that you're doing or creating or have a lot of power over that you can really affect. And then there's block from things that are either unchangeable, they're out of your control, or at this time would be so difficult to change or alter that they might as well be, you know, not changeable. Mm -hmm. Right? And one of the first things when you're thinking about block, when you're getting to a blank canvas and you're feeling um, an inability to get to the step past the blank white canvas, <laughs> past the field of snow. <laughs> if you're staring into your canvas and it stares back at you, we can just do a performance piece and call it Field of Snow. And someone has solved it that way yeah. once. <laughs> Somewhere in New York, somebody stared at a canvas, and the canvas stared back, and a bunch of people watched them do it. I haven't seen it. I haven't looked it up, but I'm just sure it's happened. Yep. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm sure it's happened. It probably it, happened in Paris, and then in yeah. Rome, and yeah. you know, and then you know, yeah. we can just go back through time. We artists are so predictable. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Got my coffee today on my Houston mug, which Ooh, makes me so happy. Show, let's see your sippy sippy. Yeah, I love my Houston mug. I have the New York mug, mm -hmm. and then I have my Houston mug. It's, they like your lipstick and how it matches your hair. And oh, thank you. Makes your cut match. Our okay, I have to share this with you because my favorite lipstick in the world. Yep. And it's Tabloid by Smashbox. Uh, you know, our new cameras don't autofocus. They don't? No, they're manual. There you go. <laughs> 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 I have to, I have to, I have a little separate. Screen. I'm not, this isn't sponsored. I just, this is the most exciting lip color I've ever had. I've never liked a lipstick so much. So I'm just telling you what it is. It's tabloid by Smashbox. If you too want a great purple lip, they had a bunch of great purple lips, some really fabulous looking makeup maven mm -hmm. at the Ulta. Oh yeah. Everyone, everyone figured loves it the, out for the, me. The, 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 the there, there's lots of comments that they like the the purple matching. It's very cute. I'm just into it, okay. so I'm sharing that with you guys. All right, so back to, back to so, the trouble at hand. So, the, so yeah, back to the tech, back to the to the elusive muse. <laughs> the elusive muse. Well, and we've talked about that as creative people. Like we've talked about muses. I mean, like people used to feel like it was like a, a spirit, an entity that could be very capricious, and would come and deign to give you insight, and then might leave. Yep. Right. I mean, this is a conversation that as a species, we've had a minute or two. Yeah. 
or an eon or two. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, this isn't a new thing, but there's a bunch that we can do. So the first thing is we can decide, is this something that's of me, mm -hmm. right? Or is this something that's out of my control? So, like, the things that are of me that I like to think are of me are, is your thinking. That would be, like, one of the first things that could cause you to create a block. What thoughts, do you mean? Well, thoughts like, I'm not good enough. Yes. Everybody's going to hate my painting. I'm going to look stupid. I'm not talented. Everybody in my family's talented, but I'm not talented. You know, and, and acrylics probably help make that tough because they have that horrible middle stage where the, it's like, oh, yeah, so the ugly that, stage. Yeah, that's probably not going to help that either, huh? That doesn't. Well, not every process is good, but yeah, 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 it doesn't help. Um, you know, uh, the way you're feeling, right? Yeah. The way you're feeling can really suck the life out of a creative journey. Um, and there's and there's two kinds of feelings, you know, um, you know, if you're in the middle of a time of deep and profound sadness, mm -hmm. like an event has occurred and you're really feeling pain, that can be a real block to your creativity. Right. Mm -hmm. I would like to add, though, just to the side of this, which is depression. Yeah. Which is a physical condition. This is an ailment. OK, this is not not being tough enough or not sucking it up enough. And I just want to say, like, if that's your block, that would be one of those not really in your control blocks. And I just want to say to you that if you are going through that, to know that you deserve empathy, the same empathy anybody who was ill would get. Mm -hmm. And you also deserve care, you know, medical care, physical care, the same things that any person who is going through an illness that was obvious. Yeah. Right. Like. I cut my thumb off would get a certain amount of sympathy. But sometimes when you have illnesses that don't present, John understands this with Crohn's. Yes. That don't present in a way that's obvious to other people. You don't necessarily get the consideration, empathy, or support that you deserve. Mm -hmm. So we just want to say right now, if that's what you're going through, you deserve it. You deserve care. Um, and I hope you're giving that to yourself. But that would be one of those sadnesses that's out of your control. Right? But there's sadnesses that are in your control. Like, you know, you had a breakup. That's, yeah. That can be really wounding. Okay. Um, you know, fears. You're just afraid. You know, the things that you're feeling and fearing. Yeah. Because we have fears. I have fears. John has to listen to my fears all the time. I know it exhausts him. Oh. Right? Well, we all have fears. <laughs> we all, and that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of the things is that you know, being compassionate to other people's fears and anxieties when you don't always understand them. Right. And yeah, it, try to because just because we can't see a thing doesn't mean it's not real. Yeah. Sometimes we treat the physical world like it's really real. You know, if you're a spiritual person, you know, kind of think about how big even in our paradigm the spiritual world is. But even if you're a quantum physicist, mm -hmm. what we don't see is so much bigger than what we do see. Regardless, the dimensions we're living in is smaller significantly to what is present in the universe at large. Yeah. You're very much into high energy physics. Would that not be true? I think so. That's true. Well, that's what they think is true. We can't really see it. <laughs> Comfort. Yeah. Right? Are you making sure that your creative space is comfortable? These things can block you. If you don't have any room in your life for you, how are you going to sit down and be creative? Yeah. If And we're guilty of this. John and I are guilty of this. The kids have whole sections of the house. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're furry children. Maybe they're children, children, but if they have whole sections of the house and you have none, where's your creative space? I'm not saying you have to take the whole thing back. Yeah. But if you're not making any space for yourself, that can really block your creativity. And having materials. Do you have the stuff to be creative? Yeah. There's, that, hmm? I was going to say, Rachel, and there's a lot of people in, in the chat that are commenting that, you know, it's just. Hi, oh, Rachel. You know, that, you know, there's a lot of moms that just need a break at home. You know, they're oh. just, you know, and, and, yeah, that's that's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people feeling that that's you know that trying to create some space in that terms is just real important. It's important and it's challenging and yeah. it comes with a heap load of guilt sometimes. Yeah, there's yeah that seems to be a, a, <laughs> another continuing and also the a, a, a fear of failure. Yeah, you know that fear of failing, you know, and then and then and then if you're a caregiver, if you're a mom caregiver, or you're caregiving somebody, you feel this responsibility to do this very important, you know, work that you're doing, which is caring for other people, caring for your children, caring for family members. 
And then if you carve out time, then there's this extra pressure to feel like you have to be successful. See, these, these blockages get complicated fast. Yeah, and Sarah, Sarah was saying, you know, it's like there's no space mentally or physically, no alone time. Yeah. You know, I totally can understand that. And, 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 you're, and you're like, well, you know, you can't get it, so sometimes you give up on it. And then it's also, it's so easy to tell your best girlfriend or your best guy friend, hey, man, hey, hey Chica, you need to take care of yourself, and then not take that advice into your own life. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> <you know? laughs> We're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> We're, yeah, we are. I, I will. I will sit there and be like, "John, you need to eat," and then not feed myself. Yeah, and this is crazy. And I'll go make. Yeah, yeah. We, we all. You know, it's like I, I find that sometimes that's a good reason why you have a partner, though, because like I'm better at caring for you, and you're better at caring for me, so we kind of do better that way. But sometimes you don't have that. Yeah, no, that's right? true. And sometimes it's hard to come up with materials like money and finances and stuff like that. It's very hard to budget yeah. like even if you have a budget where you could it's hard to sit there and say this tube of paint makes sense i mean for some people for two percent of the people life is pretty easy mm -hmm. but for 98 percent of the people it's a journey <laughs> month to month and there's no shame in that game yeah that's the reality of it two percent don't have to think about this but for the rest of us, it's something that we deal with. And so you're like, can I justify this brush? That's why I love the Simply Simmons for being $3. Yeah. It's not that there's not other great brushes. There are other great brushes, but they're 20 Right. Right? $20 brush is much harder to justify than 3 Right. <laughs> I hope it continues on because at 3 I can justify it. So there's strategies in those things that you can change. Um, if it's just sort of a thinking thing, sometimes just a simple affirmation, we forget. We tell a story to ourselves all the time, don't we? Yeah. Are you telling stories yourselves? And sometimes those stories are not helpful. Sometimes those stories tear us down. We talk to ourselves. Let's be real honest for a second, right? Are you talking kindly to yourself? Yeah. Are you waking up and going, gosh, Cinnamon, you're so smart and clever and wonderful and great and the world loves you, or are you battering yourself? You know, I, I remember it was like uh, there was a time where it was a struggle for me just to find happiness. Mm hmm. And it's a struggle for everybody to find happiness. Happiness well, is hard. Yeah. But I mean, I mean like just like <laughs> just what hard. I should say is I was so I it was actually just it was in a depression. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was so I was living unhappily. Yeah. And then ha but I had to I fight for it. Oh, no, it was, you know, that's part. I think everybody goes through that, you know, where you, you know, you, you I, yeah. I, I had a loss in career. I had a loss in. You know, play. You know, in, in my my arc in life, where we thought we were going, what was going on, and you know, that it, happens. It was it was it was a loss. It was a yeah. depression. We were mourning. Yeah. Yeah, it was rough, and it wasn't short. No. No. No, it, it takes time. It did. It took a lot of healing. Yeah. Because you can have a you can have a spiritual wound. Oh yeah. And be serious, right? And everyone's telling you suck it up. It doesn't work like that. Suck mm. up. Nobody tells you to suck up a bleeding gut wound. <laughs> no. <laughs> or, unless they're Monty Python. <laughs> or, or a broken leg. <laughs> but people will full on tell you to suck up a spiritual wound. Just yeah. suck it up. Like you have this. We've talked about it. There's, there's this window of tolerance for you to be upset about things. And then you're supposed to get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, breakups or, or losses of loved ones or a job loss. There's all sorts of losses that where you can, you know, people just don't see it. And, and that can really impact you. And yes, yeah. art can help you out of those experiences, but they can be blocks to getting to the thing that will help you. So one of the things that you can do is an affirmation, mm -hmm. right? In other words, you're telling a different story to yourself. So instead of starting the story about like whatever, you're not pretty enough, you're not young enough, you don't make enough money, whatever it is that you're telling in your head, I mean, mm -hmm. that's one area you have control. You can tell a different story. So when you get in the canvas, you can sit there and say things. I like, I have this thing. All right. Here's what I do. Uh -huh. I, I, this is going to be goofy, but it helps me. You can make up your own. I, I think that these are sacred just in the fact that we're doing them. Right. Yep. Which is I'm like, I'm just like, I am worthy and I am creative and I deserve to have this painting and this moment. I am worthy and I am creative and I deserve to have the painting and this moment. What are you doing? Stunt hands is stunt handing. I'm stunt handing. Because that part doesn't have a robot. So things like that. You can be like, I am born 
exactly as I need to be. This is one that I think people really struggle with. Yeah. You are not born missing or lacking something. I don't care how much messaging you get from the world that you are somehow functionally devoid of something you need to be. You're not. Mm-hmm. You are not missing or lacking anything to be yourself. Right? So then you need to be like, I have everything I need to accomplish my goal. Start saying positive things to yourself. Mm-hmm. I am a creative being, and I don't have to be perfect to be sitting here at this easel or a piece of paper or whatever. So that's a strategy that you can employ. Yeah. That's a good strategy you can employ. All right. For feeling wins, and we've talked about this a little bit. Yeah. Treat your feelings like they matter. Yes. In the same way you you take a vitamin C to protect your physical health, take a spiritual vitamin C. In other words... If you're feeling low, don't put a movie that depresses the heck out of you in your brain pan. Yeah, that's, you know, there's, there's, (laughs) don't, don't read sad stories. Don't, you know, treat your physical health in the same care. I mean, your, your emotional health, the same care that you would treat your physical health. So like if I were feeling run down and low, I would not go like hang around, you know, hugging a bunch of like sick people <laughs> well maybe well, i would if i was a nurse or something but you know what i'm saying i would be careful about what i was bringing into my space if i felt myself run down because i recognize that and i want to stay healthy and i'm um i wash my hands well I, you frequently th- you know if we remember wh- there was a time when i wouldn't watch shows that made me feel bad or made me bring stress into my life because i was so fighting for that peace yeah, if you, every day. if you can recognize that there's a circumstance that's not essential to your life. Yeah. Like sometimes we have circumstances that are essential to our life that are stressful. We cannot avoid. Sure. Right. But there are some circumstances. Yeah. There's some. We can skip. So treat your happiness like it has value. We treat our health kind of like it has value. We treat our pocketbooks like they have value. Treat your happiness like it's a quantifiable, valuable, precious thing. Absolutely. And. Make sure, yeah, you protect it in little ways, too. Mm -hmm. All of them. You know, if it's a little cup of tea that just makes you feel slightly better about the world, drink the tea. Yeah, because being in a happier place will get you to a better place. Yeah, and it's incremental. Don't expect yourself to be feeling really off and then think you're just going to flip a switch and feel better. No, no, no. Yeah, it's (laughs) if you just every little bit. Move the pawn forward a little bit. That's right. Each day. It's not a better than yesterday would be like the goal. Like it's not great, but it's better than yesterday. And that's how you can get out of those moments. Just don't expect to just, and also don't be afraid of feeling bad. I think that's the other thing that we have. We're afraid of it. Feeling bad can tell you some very important things about your life that you need to take in and you need to pay attention to. So don't be afraid of it. Don't just try to rush out of it. Just try to work through it. That's something art can let you do. Is work through it. So just make some little changes. Make your space more beautiful. Don't take in anything that lays you lower. And then see if that gets you for far enough along to get into some art, get into some doodling, get into some something to mm-hmm. help you work through the rest of it. Yeah. Right? Um, comfort. Definitely. It doesn't have to be your whole house. You don't have to remake your whole studio. You don't have to give yourself that fifth bedroom to make your creative space start wherever you can start and just make it your own. If it's just putting out some things like your favorite coffee mug and your little easel and your paints, that's what it is and that's okay. Yeah. Right? Or a tune that you like. Make your comfort. Make sure you're sitting in a good chair. Make sure that you are cared for a little bit. You don't have to like throw everybody that you're taking care of down the down the hallway. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But just make sure you're on that list. And then the other thing, um, the other really good strategy is if you're having a pervasive thought that is blocking you, if you find that you're like coming up to a thought you can't get past, mm-hmm. um, this pan here is an example of that. Did that here. Mm-hmm. Put what it is that you're feeling or thinking on your canvas. We do this with the wishes where we put good affirmations into the world. But you can also use that strategy to bury your thoughts or your feelings that you're struggling through. So I put it into the canvas and then where I put my main thought, I grew a tree out of it. You could grow a flower out of it. Oh yeah. If you look in the description below, there's a link to a blog and I actually have those strategies in there and in the description as well. Okay. 
right? So those are really helpful things. I mean, so you're just like, I don't really know how writing something on a canvas painting over is going to help me feel better. Mm -hmm. But it is. Are we seeing any strategies in the community today? Oh my gosh, there's so much. There's lots of people are talking and chatting. I'm in so here. glad it's you guys so are talking. Nice. So one of the uh, th there were there were a lot of people were asking about how you know how to move into inspiration. You know, that that how do they find that place of of you know uh, of, of originality of inspiration? You know, when when you're staring at the canvas and it's not you're not afraid to dive in, but it's like what to do next how, how do i you know it's like where do i find that spark to just like go do something new you know well there's a lot of strategies for that um first of all don't make inspiration a requirement of creativity huh what do you mean i mean if you wait to be inspired if you wait for the muse to come by and give you the best idea you ever had yeah. you may not paint for a while Okay. Right? Yeah. I mean, because she just doesn't always visit. That's why the Greeks had all that stuff that they wrote about her. She's not like <laughs> a, she's not on a long-term house guest. <laughs> she's so. a short-time visitor. And I don't want to wait to when she shows up to have a painting moment. So sometimes I just, I learned this from the daily painters. I, I think that daily painting uh -huh. is a powerful tool. Because what it teaches you, and, and this is whether you're commercial and you're working in commercial field as an artist and you're having to produce, or you're in some type of venue where you're making your money as an artist, you'll learn kind of early on, you have to produce artwork mm -hmm. no matter how you feel. Yeah. It's, those things have to not be connected anymore. And so you have to start putting it out and you can't wait for that moment to create. So that sounds a lot like that journey to happiness, too. You can't just wait for happiness come. You have to make those steps. Happiness happens along the way of trying to, yeah. It's not the destination. It's the journey. And somewhere along the journey, you're finding it. So as you're traveling along in your creativity, you will have moments of, like, stuff just coming in. That is about things people are saying. If you watch the TED on creativity, what you're going to learn is it's about things people say to you, all these images that you take in, every painting you ever saw, sleeping downtime going to the park playing with your dog hugging your kids there's this whole series of events that are constantly swirling around inside you like a soup mm -hmm. on occasion as you're going through your creative process they're going to all click like little lego blocks and you're going to have inspiration mm. right not going to be all the time when i did the weeping willow it was a rough day for inspiration for me yeah but I needed I needed to work through some stuff so you put it up there. Yeah. Right. Not, not all of us can live in a teepee in Sweden and just step out oh to a beautiful gosh. view. Rick. <laughs> Rick, the teepee diaries. What a great series. Right. But I mean that that's what you're doing is you're just saying, all right, the act of creating is what is important to me. Inspiration is a wonderful thing that can happen during the act of creation, mm -hmm. but it should not be the gatekeeper to being creative. Right. But things that get you inspired is life experiences experiences um take in paintings at a museum read wonderful books uh play with new art materials expose yourself to new things mm -hmm. the more you can expose yourself to emotionally mentally physically the more inspiration will start to happen and then there's a saying in art which is like creativity is not a limited resource the more you use it the more you have yeah totally true the more you ask of yourself to be creative the more that's gonna come in. Now, I wanna talk about that there's some things that can block your creativity that you cannot change. Like, you might have an illness. It's true. Right, that's a fact, that's the thing you might be going through. And it may have some days that are real valleys, peaks and valleys, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you might be in the middle of a treatment that is physically depleting. You might have an illness that just takes out your body, John understands that. Mm -hmm. Crohn's attack. There's not arting on a Crohn's attack day. No. No. He's not going to go work on his truck. He's going to lay down. He's got to recover. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lay down on my truck. <laughs> right. You know, that's the hard part, though, is that, like, you know, there are some times with illnesses like what I have where, you know, I if I'm not laying down, I'm in miserable physical pain. But as soon as I lay down, I feel fine. And then I start feeling guilty and, and like, man, I'm just worthless. I'm losing time. I'm just laying here in bed. What am I doing? And then I get up and I run around for half Instead an hour. Instead of being present in the now for the relief. Yeah. And then, I, and then I'm up and I run around for half an hour and then I'm cratered on the floor and having to crawl back to the bedroom. Yeah. Which you, what you need to be working on is just being so grateful that you're having a minute of break from it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Be in the now. Be in the now. Don't be in the I should have been. Should have yeah. do, should have been, ought to be doing. Won't help you. Mm -hmm. But if you have an illness, that's different than having like something that you can just easily work through. And what I'll say about the strategy about dealing with an illness or chronic pain, because there's a lot of people in chronic pain. Yeah. Right? Chronic pain feels like it steals your life. Illnesses, chronic illnesses, and chronic pain feels like they steal your life. Like they're stealing little chunks of your life. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, 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 so it creates that emotional cycle, and it creates those cycles. And yes, when you're painting, you can feel better. But, you know, that's not an everyday thing. And what I'll say about the strategy about that is, is that illnesses are not like a plateau. Pain is not like a plateau. There's peaks, there's valleys. Yeah. Right? Be in the now. If this is a good now, celebrate that moment. Mm -hmm. Create in that moment to help you celebrate this experience. Be painting in that moment so you can enjoy the peace that you're having to whatever degree that you can have it. Right? Mm -hmm. That way when you're maybe having a hard time, you have that emotional resiliency. There's a thing that artists develop. It's called emotional resiliency. Yeah. And it's because we get really good at failure. <laughs> and <laughs> That's really what it is. We're really good at failure. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, you know, and they walk up to obvious things and go, what's that? <laughs> it's like, oh, man. Yeah, you do. As an artist, you get a, you start to develop a thicker skin. Yeah. And you start to get success tools for failure, which is a fantastic thing. Being successful at failure is the best thing in the universe. Mm -hmm. Right? The more you can succeed at failing, <laughs> the happier you will be. Because, I mean, yeah, you're going to succeed. You're going to have moments of the wins, right? Yeah. But just equally, you're going to have moments of the fail. If you're out there trying, mm -hmm. if you're swinging the bat, you're not going to hit every ball. No. Right? You're going to hit some of the balls really well. That's right. And some of them are not going to go so well. Yeah. The ability to be just fine with the balls that don't go and really experience the balls that do, that's emotional resiliency. That's what that looks like. Yeah. There's mental situations like I, bipolar. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're bipolar, there's brain chemistry happening. You may not be in control of all the time that can steal sections of your life. Yes. Right. On top of the guilt and shame and all the stuff that comes with it that should not come with it. I'm going to say that right now. If you are dealing with any mental illness, this much like depression should be treated with sympathy and empathy. Yeah. Can't be seen. So sometimes people they you know, everybody wants you to make them comfortable. Right. Yeah. Everybody around you wants to make them comfortable. So if you're behaving in a way that may or may not be currently in your complete driving seat and they're feeling uncomfortable, they're going to put a lot on you to be like, make me more comfortable. Not your job. Not your job. Yeah. You know, your job is to, to take through. care yeah. of take yourself. Yeah, take care of yourself, make it through there. You know. Have more good days than bad days. That's For your, sure. Yeah, illness and any of that. So that's... So the strategy for that is take the moments that are good mm -hmm. and really be in them. Take the wins. I'm always telling people, celebrate the wins. It's like a big roller in our house. You got to celebrate <laughs> yeah. the wins. Yeah. Celebrate them. And the other thing is forgive, 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 forgive yourself. Not everybody around you. That's a big job. Mm -hmm. You. Right? The hardest person in your life to forgive will be you. So focus on that. That seems so, like a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you can get off your own back, you will succeed a lot more creatively. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's just giving yourself permission to not be okay right now so that you can be okay in a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. that was a big thing for me is saying, all right, oh. I'm not going to, I'm just going to give myself 10 minutes now to just not be okay. That way in 10 minutes, I'll be all right. And I can get back to what I was doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you were not put here to suffer, and you were not put here to take the slings and arrows of all humanity. No. That is not your job. The other thing that you can have in your life that can be out of your control is, let me see if I can find this, because I had some notes on it, and I was like, ah. You made notes? Fine, yeah, I do, because there's a lot. <laughs> no, I thought I'd, I've actually given this to you before. Finances. Okay, oh. so there's finances that you can control. Right. Like you could look in your budget and say to yourself, I don't really care about this extra pair of shoes. Yeah. Right. And I have a lot of shoes and I would rather get this paint. And these are the kinds of budget decisions that you can make. Right. Like as long as you're in your budget, you're using your coupons, you're respecting your financial health. You can make decisions to make sure you have materials based on those sort of exchanges. Now, I've seen some posts on Facebook 
our ladies collect brushes like most collect shoes. And <laughs> so. I get it. I'm so with you. I, love I don't need another pair of shoes, but I could go get like five or six more brushes. And that's just where I prioritize my time. Yeah. Because my shoes don't really do a lot for me. My brushes give back to me a lot. So mm-hmm. that's just, that's not that there's anything wrong with shoes. Your no. mom. My mom has is to. powered by shoes like a Melga Marcos. Powered by shoes, yeah. <laughs> her closet's on another level, you know. So it's just whatever brings joy into your life. I validate whatever brings joy into your life. You have to make your life work for you, not your life work for me. So, mm-hmm. but that's that's an exchange. But then there's finances. Boy, that isn't that easy. Yeah. Right. And so in those moments, um, you know. I always think of the best art materials that your budget will allow. And what I really mean is sometimes the art material is the pad of paper at the dollar store yeah. and the big pen. Yeah. And there's an artist on, and I made John, what was his name, David or something, Brian? <laughs> I made John watch him a bunch. I mean, he was just doing stuff on like dollar store paper with the big pen, and it was brilliant. Oh, yeah. There was a bunch of guys who were just like, yeah. oh, yeah. And it don't, is definitely. Don't, there's no shame in your game. The materials are your stage. Yeah, I mean, it just is what it is, and never, ever, 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 ever be ashamed of what your financial situation is. Yeah. This, is, this isn't this is the... I don't know, sometimes I feel like in the Western world we get a little like, you're winning to the degree that you have a big bank account. Yeah. It's not really... It's, not, it's great for manufacturers <laughs> and businesses, but that's not really good for humanity, and it's not actually true. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just that's just the thing. It's just so never, ever, 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 ever beat yourself up about your bank account. Yeah. Yeah. Don't it's, you know, just one of those things. Everybody has one. It goes up. It goes down, you know, and you're not a better person for having a big one. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> There's no tombstone that said, here lies Bob. He had a great big bank account. Or, or here Maybe lies is, Marge, and she kept a really clean kitchen. <laughs> she yeah. did good laundry. The stuff that's important, if you go by a cemetery, it's always interesting. Maybe we'll take a field trip sometime. If you go by a cemetery and look at tombstones, you get a real sense of what was actually important. Yeah. And it's, you know, good friend, good father, good mother, good, f- you know. It's the way we relate to each other. It's how we are as human beings. That's what's really important. And the rest of it is just, how we like to organize our life to be happy. Tutankhamun brought it, with, took it with him, though. <laughs> I mean, he rolled up there like a <laughs> real pharaoh. <cannot. laughs> he rolled up there like a real pharaoh. I was like, no, I'm taking this stuff with me, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing that you may or may not be able to control, and I really vacillate about putting this always, whenever I'm doing this, in the category of things you can control and things you can't. And what I'm going to say is this is going to walk the line. Yeah. Okay. So you know how we have light keepers in our community? Lots of them. They're all here. Lots. Of, they're all hugging each other. It's, High light keepers. Lots of guys. Lots of great stuff going. These on. are the people who never miss an opportunity to lift another human being up. Yep. Say something nice about their painting. To encourage them. To shine a light on the beauty that's them, and to say, "Hey, we're all lights. Let me shine my light and help you turn your light on, so we can all be brighter." Yeah. Right. Light keepers. I love them. They're in the world. There is also shadow makers mm. okay there just are i mean yep. people just come in all kinds of flavors and one of them is a shadow maker and sometimes shadow makers are people in our lives that we can choose to have in or not in them right mm-hmm. like we could have a friend who's a shadow maker and really that's optional mm-hmm. you got a friend who's tearing you down sometimes they call them frenemies mm-hmm. right you have a friend that's just tearing you down and can't let you just win that's kind of a decision that you're making yeah Right. But sometimes we have people in our lives that are shadow makers that it's not an easy, clear cut decision that we can't just easily remove them. They're family makers or somebody in our sphere that we can't, you know, easily remove. Mm -hmm. That is a thing that can really and I've seen this again and again and again. I mean, to the point I got violent. Right. We've had we've had people write in saying they were violently attacked for being creative. Yeah. Certainly had a bunch of people who have been verbally abused. Yeah. For being creative. And what I'll say about the shadow makers is they have some types of, uh, they like to do stuff. They like to do this under the auspices of being honest. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm just telling you how it is. I'm just being honest. This is not honesty. This is just hateful rudeness. This is just you being rude and calling it being honest. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I can be honest all day and not make anybody cry. Yeah. Or be not nice. (laughs) Yeah. It's just honesty and rudeness are not connected factors. No. No. 
No, being authentic and being truthful, right, does not ever have the requirement of unkindness to it. Yeah. But there are just people that when your light starts to shine, mm -hmm. it's like they go into overdrive to put a lid on it. Mm -hmm. Don't let you do it. Because when your light shines, it outlines their shadow. <laughs> yeah. And they don't like it. Yeah, no. Because they, they like to tell everybody that they're, they're wonderful, they're right, they're righteous. Right? Yeah. And this isn't spiritual righteousness. You you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, they're just right. They're, yeah, they got a, they got a, <laughs> they got a they got a high horse and they're going to ride on it. <laughs> and if you suddenly start to get happy and then you start outlining their darkness, then they have to start feeling their darkness. They will like flip out and do what they have to to take that out. Mhm. Mm okay. So that can be a very hard thing to have in your life to be creative around. But if you have that going on, oh my gosh, you need creativity. You yeah. need it. You need it. So you're going to have to find a way to fight for it, to, 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 to get it into yourself because you're going to really need it. Because when you're creative, the world stops being noisy and you can hear yourself. You're going to find solutions that work for you. Mm -hmm. Not somebody else's solution for you. Not somebody's marketed plan, process, solution that they tell you this is what's going to make you happy, but what actually will make you happy. Yeah. Right? Which will be different than what makes me happy and different than what makes John happy. It's true. That's the power of art is getting you into your authentic true self so you can hear your real voice and you can start connecting to something greater. Now, when you have things that are out of your control, right, yeah. beyond your control, my first go to is honestly, I give things over to a higher creative power. Yeah, of course. Works for me. May not work for everybody. That may not be how you architect your outlook in the universe. And that's completely cool. <laughs> right. It's just a strategy that works for me, so I'm sharing with you. I honestly, when I run into something that is beyond my control, I do. I, I will hand things over that I, I to a higher creative power. Mm -hmm. Makes me feel better. Seems to work. All right. For yep. me. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of people in our community who agree with you. They, they're, they're right there, too. So. And the other thing I do is I forgive myself for the things I can't change. Yeah. Right. I know we're sounding like a meeting here, <laughs> but there's some wisdom in that. Yeah, you is, have to forgive is. yourself and for the stuff that's just not your fault, man. It's just not your fault. There's a lot of people in the chat that are echoing this. They really agree with your, with what you're saying and what you're feeling. And, you know, there are a lot of people who felt that, you know, they were once a shadow maker or, and, and they're really happy that they're able to now see themselves as a light keeper. And oh, my God. That's the most beautiful thing, because I think all shadow makers, I'm going to say this right now. I think all shadow makers can be light keepers. For sure. I think that I think actually that every single light, uh, every single person on the planet, is in their core being made of light. Oh yeah. Right. And I I don't know how the whole universe works, so I don't worry about the stuff I don't have control over. But I believe that everyone is totally capable of being a light keeper, and that you have made that journey. I just want to send you a spiritual hug because that's big. Yeah. Because I think we're all capable of being shadow makers and we're all capable of being light keepers. And just art hugs to you for that. Yeah, Sorry, that just sure. got me really excited. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody made cinnamon. Oh, inspired cinnamon. No, no, it does. Because, you know, I mean, it's like it's easy to be, you know, pleasant if you're happy all the time. But what if you're really angry? How do you deal with that? Yeah. What if you're really, 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 really mad? And angry. Uh, don't hit walls. Don't hit walls. No, because then you got to fix the drywall. <laughs> you got to fix the drywall. <laughs> but, I mean, that happens to people. Yeah. Life can make you angry, and then you can be an angry person, and everybody's, like, beating you up and telling you're a terrible person because you're angry. Yeah. That might be a little bit like being depressed, though, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, a lot Maybe. of times, you know, men aren't given uh, a lot of acceptable ways to express emotion except for, you know, anger. That's a good point. You know? It's it's like you know it's it's not okay to be, feel sad or cry or upset, but it's socially acceptable to be angry. Kind of. Well, I mean, but it, <laughs> but, but for men, but for men, and then not is. for women. It's a very complicated world. Yeah, that's weird. Gosh, we're a weird species. Maybe we should just give more hugs. Okay. So. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. <laughs> Hug some people. Not to throw um, you off your little your your, your process. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once you've forgiven yourself, you know yeah. that could be life's work. So don't expect it to resolve by next Tuesday. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> once you've forgiven yourself for the mistakes that you've made, 
Because we've all made some. And you know what? I don't care how big the mistake is. Yeah. I don't care how big of a mistake you're facing. To get through this wall, you're going to have to forgive yourself for it. Yeah. Because unless you have a time machine, the only way to improve your experience in this life is to move forward. Yeah. Right? And to do better. That's it. Short of being a time lord, Doctor Who can make mistakes <laughs> and fit. Actually, no, he can't because he can't cross his own time stream. So nobody, not even a time lord, can go back in time and fix things. So since you can't go back in time and fix things, you're going to have to do the hard, hard work of letting it go and forgiving yourself your mistakes mm -hmm. and moving forward and doing better in the world. Yeah. It's all you can do. You're going to need to make a space and time for yourself. Moms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hard-working CEOs. There's a whole group of you doctors. There's a whole group of you that are so busy in your lives. And I, I'll do this. My mom gets on my case all the time. It's very hard to make time for yourself. Yes. Yes, it is. Make some. 15 minutes, 20 minutes. doesn't have to be all day. You don't have to carve a big, giant ice cream scoop out of your day. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah, just a little bit. Tiny bit. Do what you can to give yourself the resources and materials to be creative. If it's a dollar store pad of paper and a pen, that's what it is. Be okay with it. Be valid about it. Mm -hmm. No shame in that game. And if you have like a bunch of resources to go get a bunch of golden paint and make a big gorgeous studio, don't be ashamed of that either. No. There's nothing wrong with having abundance. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally okay to be abundant. And it's okay to not have a lot of extra surplus resources. Neither one of those things require shame. God, yeah. we're shamed for everything, aren't we? Can be, yeah. Get rid of the shame. Shame yeah. is a pointless, pointless, pointless emotion. We all feel it sometimes. It should, it, you feel it and understand what it's trying to tell you and then leave it in the dirt. <laughs> right? Well, like when I missed my flight, I felt tremendous shame. Oh, man, that was a rough day. It was a rough day for me. It was a really rough, rough day. It was a big grown woman sobbing like a baby. It happens. Mm -hmm. Right? I felt that shame. And I recognized that maybe I'm not as far ahead in my dyslexia as I had felt. And just implementing yeah. old strategies again. It, I got my information from it. And I'm letting the shame go and moving forward to the positive actualized change. I have a question on that here. Hmm. So Flame was asking, you know, Hi, Flame. what do we do or say when we're finished and we show off our art and they and they begin to suggest how to finish it and it just crushes them? All right. Well, because you just came to my number four. <laughs> <laughs> Did we? Do not share where you are not supported. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Here's the thing about sharing art. And I love you guys to share art. I want you to put it on Facebook. I want you to put it on Twitter. And I want you to get likes. But there's this sort of flip side to that coin. Right, which is that people can have opinions. Oh my gosh. And they're not artists and they don't even if they are artists, I mean it's your painting. Right? Yeah. There isn't like a blueprint that we're following. That's why it's awesome. Yeah, and it's yeah. It, it can be dangerous showing your artwork to other artists because they can feel compelled to tell you how to improve it. Which isn't what you're necessarily asking yeah. for. It's like, yeah, if you haven't rolled up into, like, Monday, if you haven't run into third Monday critique with the VAA yeah. up in here in Houston, you don't really need an opinion. Yeah, it's, you know. Oh, and some of you guys ask for me, like, do you have any criticism? No, please <laughs> stop asking for criticism. You don't need it. There's a time when there is a thing where it's, it's called critique, but it's not critical where you have developed a bunch of skills and you have a lot of confidence in yourself and you have a lot of direction and, and sense of space. Mm -hmm. And you will go to a peer that has a similar thing and you might peer to peer have a conversation with them about a place that you might be stuck. Mm -hmm. And from their vantage, maybe they'll have some insight that can help you move forward. That's a fabulous experience. None of y'all are there yet. Yeah. Right. I mean, you well, might maybe. be. Just to maybe you might here, be. But, yeah, but, yeah, but if you're a very new painter. This is. Yeah. No, you're finding the things you're doing right. Yeah. Yeah. You Fine. need to be looking for the things that you're doing right so you can do more and more and more of that. You don't actually need to know what you're doing wrong. Like, on occasion, people ask me, and I'll be like, maybe drop a shadow yeah. under it. There's some skills that you could learn you'd enjoy. But it's really, I'm not Pollyanna. John see me to critique. I'm not Pollyanna. I'm just space appropriate. And we should take this opportunity as a lesson because when giving a critique, a lot of times when somebody says, What do you think about my artwork? 
you should say what you like about it. Mm-hmm. They know what they, they've done they wrong. Know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> most of us looking at it, you know, we, we all know where we messed up. And if they're really looking for some guidance, definitely find a couple things that are good before you give guidance and give it as guidance. Yeah. Not as a value set. Ask them where they think they need improvement. So flame when you're there and yeah. so you're ask somebody and they start to tell you and it's crushing your spirit. I just want you to hear me. And then eventually, hopefully, hear yourself, which is that there's not a value in this painting in the way they're assessing it, right? Whatever they're trying to get out of your artwork is some weird journey they're having. Once I make a painting, once you make a painting, any of you at home, once you make a painting and you put it on the wall, believe it or not, your whole relationship... To, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, what did I push? <laughs> that was just your you being whole super. relationship to that painting is done. Mm-hmm. Now other people are going to come up to it and they're going to have a whole experience that has nothing to do with you, what you did, your journey, your creation process, any of it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, right, they will really understand what you're creating and they'll resonate to it on that level. And sometimes they will get something out of it that is so tangential. Yeah. Right. Um, my mom did a painting of some lilies. Do you remember these on the wall? Oh, that yeah. I had such a big reaction to. Oh, yeah. So she'd come out of a long, 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 long illness and she painted these lilies. And Wow. It was like she put the entire appendicitis and a 60-day hospitalization and her nearly dying on this painting for me. And I could not sit with that painting. And everybody else who came up to it, they loved the colors and they loved the coolness and they loved the texture. And they had a completely different experience. And every time I was sitting with it, I was just smack dead in the middle of my mom's illness Mm -hmm. emotionally. Yeah. None of these reactions had anything to do with her and that painting. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right? <laughs> My reaction, even as an informed artist, didn't have anything to do with her and what she was doing and how she was creating at all. Yeah. And the people who came in and just saw healing and peace, It did, her her journey was over. Yeah. And your journey is over. So when you're showing it to somebody, you've already had your journey. Right? And it would be like you walked a trail and then came out at the end of the trail and then they told you stuff about your trail. It makes no sense. They weren't on it with you. They're at the end of the trail. Yeah. They don't know anything about what you saw. You can see canyons and deers and all kinds of things, and they could be talking about some weird little cactus at the end of your trail. Yeah. Unrelated. That's all I can tell you. It's unrelated. So just don't show it to people that you're not safe. That's why I love our group. Yes. I'm on a big soapbox here. I feel it, but I'm going to go all the way. (laughs) Look, I love our group. This is a safe place to have a first painting that's what we love on the website and that's what we love on the facebook and that's what we love in the groups and they're echoing that in the chat right now right Mm -hmm. and that's why this is amazing is because you can have a first painting and people know to be respectful and treat it as the sacred journey that it is yes because it is and you don't need people throwing rocks at you on a sacred journey happens but it's not helpful. And, and I'll say that there's a lot of support happening out here in the chat. There's a lot of people talking about their journeys with each other and sharing that. And it's really nice. So I'm loving that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Oh, yeah. I forgot things. about that. You should do those things. <laughs> say that quickly. For the longest videos on YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Back to what we were talking about. This yeah. is actually a very important quest. Please pass this quest forward because I think this is something people really, really, really need. Yeah. Yeah. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. So as you're traveling along in your art journey, um, you're going to be doubting yourself. So give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You're going to be doubting you're going to develop the skills. You're going to be doubting that this painting is going to work out. I doubt. I've been painting forever, and I know better. Everybody goes through periods of doubt. So give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Just Okay. I like John loves a saying, because I say it to him all the time, put a pin in it. (laughs) I'm not saying discard it entirely. Just put a pin in it, leave it on the wall, and come back to it later and see if it was valid. Yeah. Like in two weeks, right? You know, so if you're really feeling something that's really overwhelming you, if you can, if you can emotionally pock it up, pin it to the wall and say, I'm going to get back to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. But you're not helping me right now. Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. All right. Here's the thing. No one's born uncreative. A lot of you have this kind of internal dialogue that you were somehow missing a creativity gene. Right? And what I want to tell you about creativity is, is it's like, I love the saying, I've totally taken it in. There's no normal except on my dishwasher. Yeah. I love that. It's my new thing. It's my new jam. Totally credit you guys for that. Well, there's not a normal creativity. Creativity doesn't present in one kind of a way. 
So, like, sometimes people say, like, if you're on the autistic spectrum, you're not creative. Well, that's the craziest thing I have ever heard. Right. <laughs> of course you are. It may not present the way other people are wanting it to present. Doesn't right. matter. It's still creative. Mm -hmm. However you express your creativity as a spiritual being having a physical experience. Oh, yeah, I went there. Mm -hmm. As a spiritual being, right, as a consciousness, right, if that's where you're at, as a consciousness having a physical experience as a spiritual being having a physical hallucination for a little bit. However it presents, it doesn't matter. The core of who you are is this incredibly light, beautiful, creative being. Yeah. May present in a million kinds of ways, and not everybody has to get it, but it doesn't make it any less true. Mm -hmm. Right? People <laughs> getting your creativity, right, and validating it is lovely. Mm -hmm. But once you validate it, all the rest is just frosting on the cake. We all like it. I like frosting. I like cake. I like cake. So I'm not saying it's not a good thing. Just maybe not highly nutritious or spiritually. <laughs> deeply meaningful. Okay. The other thing is is the uniqueness. And um, I know I've got this thing coming up with Life Book with yeah. Willowing. I'm oh, so yeah. excited about it. Um, and I'll be talking about it. But, of course, we'll talk about it here. But, but at the basic core of it, um, uh, you are unique. That's not something you're going to get rid of. No. Right? The brush stroke is the fingerprint of the soul. How we paint. When you go to Sotheby's and you, and you go to school and you get a PhD in art and you're trained in how to identify art, you're not actually learning to identify the signature. You identify the process of the artist. Yeah. Right? So what materials did he use? Where did he get his materials? How did he source it? How did he put the paint on the canvas? All of those things are what tells them if a painting is real or not. Yeah. None of that's in the signature. And none of it means like people try to fake it, right? Well, that's fraud. Yep. You don't need to be a fraud. You are authentically yourself, right? You have have a voice and there are ways to develop that voice there are ways to clarify that voice and to put that voice on an amplifier but you're not missing it mm. so if you're looking for it it is there it's like it's like at the end of kung fu panda when he gets the scroll and it's a mirror oh, i gotta yeah. tell you in all spiritual quests including an art one guess what it's the mirror i'm not teaching you to paint like me i'm teaching you to be you paint like you because that's the only thing you can do you can't paint like anybody but you you're you. Yeah. Made perfectly the way that you are. Okay. <laughs> now, here's my last thought on the creativity. I don't know this is a long one. You're, you're sort of, you're sort of you wondering. guys thought it was like, oh, it's going to be like quiz day. We're just going to talk about artist block. We'll probably do some exercises, you know, like the paint, the thing. And you didn't know it was going to be a thing. Did y'all know it was going to be a thing? I didn't know it was going to be a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Because this is maybe the biggest thing right here, right? Yeah. Like for those of us that came today, this was a big thing. For those of us that come on the replay, this is a big thing. Yeah. Here's the last thing, okay? The reason all of this is worth it, at the end of the day, yeah. besides the fact that you guys are all worth it, and you're worth it, sweetie. You're worth it. I like it. The reason all of this is worth it is that when you're creative, quilting, sewing, painting, drawing, doodling, right? The whole world makes noise. I don't know if you all have noticed this. The whole world makes a lot of noise. They make it on news channels, and they make it on billboards, and they make sound bites and terabytes and they're telling you what to think and they're telling you what to do and they're your friends and your family and everybody's coming in and they're making all this noise at you but inside of you each person is a clear clear bell it's a it's a clear voice it's and it's authentic and it's real and when you're in an art space right for moms and grandparents and people who are you know workaholics Wherever you're at, when you're in that art space, you can hear your universal truth. Mm -hmm. Right? Not everybody else's universal truth, which would be useless to you. <laughs> Yours. Right? So that's why, like, I can't say, like, art makes people good people. Yeah. Because maybe, I don't know, that's not what they were doing on the planet at this time. You know, explains <laughs> why Hitler could paint. But what it does do is it lets you hear yourself. Yeah what's right for you what you need in this moment what what is the clarifying truth for you which like the fact that you are not a copy of 25 other people your truth is not a copy of 25 other people's truths no right which is which is why it's sort of hard to sell one right what you need what you need in your life is in you 
And in the space of being creative, and there's and there's other space. Yoga, I think, does it. I think making music, writing poetry. I think there's other things that do this. Mm -hmm. Whatever silences the world, unless you hear yourself, is worth fighting for. So if you're going through block, whether it's things that you can change and you have some plans to to do that, you know, try a new media. Like if you're blocked, you could try a new media, try a new skill, right? Are you watching tutorials but not doing any of the work? <laughs> you can do those things, right? Yeah. You know, whatever it is, it's worth fighting for because if you can get unblocked and you can get into that creative space and you can do that regularly, if you can take your mental, emotional, non-tangible physical health, yeah. put it on the thing, you're going to hear yourself, and then you're going to start making movements in your life to a real happiness, which will not be in a big screen TV. As much as I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> And with like three more inches on my screen, that's not where my happiness is going to come from this week. Yeah. Right? And actually, my happiness comes from the fact that R.R. Martin wrote this really cool show. <laughs> I really, really like it. But it doesn't come from, you know, the opulence in my house. Nothing wrong with having an opulent house at all. No. Nothing wrong with having a modest home at all. Right? It's about being in what space you're in and being okay there and being happy. And there are processes to feel better. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you have to be deliriously happy every minute of the day. Probably won't be. I have not pulled that off. Have you pulled that off? Uh, no. no. But having happiness in your life, just knowing that you deserve health in your life, you deserve well-being in your life, and you deserve happiness in your life. Wherever you are, wherever you live, whatever's going on. Well, there's a lot of people who are feeling really happy and inspired from this they want you to just, 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 I mean, like, I've seen three or four people say, I'm ready to go paint right now. I am so helping. I, like, if I helped anyone, I would feel like this day was worth it. And so hopefully we helped somebody today. And I, and hopefully I, we helped you. And we're going to say hi to Mark, who's 12 minutes behind us right now. 12 minutes behind us? But he said in the chat just a couple minutes ago that he's 12 <laughs> minutes behind in the video. <laughs> hi, Mark, who is 12 minutes behind. Mark, who is a time lord. <laughs> He's he's just trailing us a little bit. And I just I just hope we'll take this minute to realize how lucky we all are to have this weird YouTube platform mm -hmm. and this fabulous chat feature. We're gonna there's a new chat feature for YouTube. Yep. Which we're gonna try to make sure we have. We're gonna make sure we support it. So you guys can stay in contact yeah. with each other. As much as we can figure it. We'll figure it out. But we're really blessed to have this. This I mean and thank you guys. Thank you guys. Yeah. You guys we're blessed make to this. have you guys. You guys make this possible. Thank you. And I really hope this helps. And I'm going to see you guys at the easel Saturday. Are you? Saturday? Oh, what are we going to do Saturday? They're all asking, what, is there gonna, something going to happen yes, on Saturday? Yes, I know. Sure. i got to get it up. i got to get it up. But I'm being very forgiving of myself. I'm not beating myself up. Yeah. I'm going to do a palette knife wave. Okay. It's going to be um, what we got from the poppies and um, the butterfly. We're going to kind of pull it together. You could do it with credit cards. You could do it with a brush, though, too. And I'll make sure in that one I'll show you some some stiff. If you have a Simply Simmons Extra Firm Filament brush, you can do a lot of these palette knife techniques with your brush. It's just putting on thick paint. Gotcha. Yeah. So we're just going to have some fun and make a happy, relaxed, abstract palette knife wave for Love Summer Art. Love Summer Art. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll probably follow that up with some other tropical painting <laughs> later. Luna is it, singing back there in the background. My I'm daughter has a song in her heart. <laughs> and she's singing it. Bless her. <laughs> She's singing it loud. So yeah, a lot of people are saying they're looking forward to palette knives, palette knife stuff, more palette yeah. knife stuff. Just some fun stuff. I just want—I like to sometimes give you guys stuff in threes or in collections, so you have a little bit to talk about. And then if there's more, you know, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of people. Oh, oh, Angela's got something. Oh yeah. Angela's coming back with a credit card. You guys oh, are cool. in the know. She's coming back with something with a credit card. <laughs> He's gone to get her. <laughs> She's singing so loud. She's feeling it. She's feeling it in her soul. Man, we all have a song we want to sing loud. I just wish that for all of you. <laughs> yeah. I wish that for everyone here that something so good happens that you just feel like you've got to sing. For sure. Got to dance. Got to paint. Got to celebrate your lives a little bit because we all deserve that. It's a... I'm going to wax here. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. It is a crazy place we live. We are in a rock with a very thin atmosphere with this ozone in the middle of space. Uh-huh. You know? It's kind of bananas. It is pretty crazy. We could make this place awesome. Mm -hmm. Make it wonderful. And and we deserve that. Yeah. We, on the little blue rock, third from the sun. Yep. We deserve it. 
You deserve it. And I want it for you. Love you guys. Come join us live Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central or enjoy one of the hundreds of paintings available on replay anytime 